What is going on, everybody? Welcome back into TTP Sports and the Flyers. They play another team, another top team in the National Hockey League, and the talent discrepancy shows and rears its ugly head once again, as even though for two periods they were playing with the Carolina Hurricanes, even though it was an extremely, extremely weird game, but then the train fell off the rails in the start of the third period, just goals galore. For Carolina, breakdowns in the defensive zone galore for the Flyers, and it results in a 4-1 to loss to the Carolina Hurricanes, and there's only so much that hard work can do with this Flyers roster when you're playing against these top teams. It's just clear and evident. Carolina has 20 billion times the center depth that you do. Your center depth is non-existent, and I'm going to keep pointing that out because it's very evident that centers are the, one of the main issues and main needs that this Flyers organization needs. Because they don't have centers. They barely even have top They really don't have top centers at this point. Sean Couturier, he is a shell of himself. And I, like this is not me hating on Sean Couturier. That's just facing reality. He's not the same player that he was a couple of years ago before all the back surgeries. He's not the same Selkie nominee that he was. He just doesn't have the same jump. He's just a broken down machine right now with so much wear and tear on the body. Morgan Frost, at this point, he's been scratched for so many games, and now his name is coming up in trade rumors once again. Who knows how much longer the future is of Morgan Frost with the Philadelphia Flyers, and I guess that was an expectation at this point because I didn't expect him to last that much longer here regardless. Then you have Scott Lawton. Then you have Ryan Paling. Then you have Noah Cates. Those are all bottom six type guys. And even some of those guys shouldn't be here to begin with. And that's something we're going to get into as this video goes along. And that's more in regards to the front office needing to evaluate some things and having to make some moves. Because you cannot sit here and tell me that you like this team with the way just how untalented they are compared to other teams. Yes, the Flyers do have talented players. But right now, I'm seeing signs of some guys in regression. I'm seeing some guys struggling to take a next step forward. There's just so many things that are going on. Right now, your three best players on this team are Matvey Michkov, Travis Konechny, and Travis Sanheim. Those guys are collectively good each and every night. You don't know what you're getting from Owen Tippett every night. And right now, even though he had a hot streak a couple of weeks ago, he's right back into the cold streak that he was in the beginning of the year. Just really not generating anything. Tyson Forrester really does not look confident in his offensive capabilities. Complete shell of himself as he was last year. It's really tough to watch him some nights. Even though he still does show some strong sides on the, de on the defensive side of his game, he needs to find a way to get going offensively. He needs to score goals. Same thing with Owen Tippett. He needs to score goals. And what else are we looking at some other people? Yeah, they have some injuries on the blue line. Cam York, even though it does sound like Cam York and Emil Andre are going to be good to go for Saturday's game against the Chicago Blackhawks, so we'll hopefully be getting some bodies back for that game, but there's some guys on the defense that you really don't expect to be here for the long period of time. Rasmus Ristolainen, what's his future here? There really isn't a future here for him, obviously because of the trade rumors from Anthony Sanfilippo you know, a couple of weeks ago. I mentioned those a couple of times. Uh, Jaeger Zamula. I've had enough of seeing him. He's been here a couple of years. There's really no upside to a Yegor Zamula. Uh, who else? Nick Sealer. Even though you did extend him, that's really all he is is a bottom six type of veteran player. Eric Johnson, he knows what his role is. And that's not really talking about those guys. There's just a lot of guys on this team that probably shouldn't be here. That you probably should have moved a while ago. And right now, there's just a little bit of doubt in my mind, and a little bit of fear in my mind that this front office is a little too complacent with the roster at hand because they didn't make any moves in the offseason besides basically bringing in Matt Vemichkov. That was their entire offseason game plan. Bring in Matt Vemichkov. That's our big move. We really don't have to do anything else. Don't have to address anything else in the team. We're a team that's struggling by the cap. Blah, 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 blah. We're going to wait for some shed, you know, some salary to shed, wait for some dead contracts, dead money to come off of the cap, blah, 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 blah. But then eventually, you can only look at the team at face value and then just 
completely see the lack of talent. Because it goes right to the center depth. It goes right to some even the defensive depth as well. Because there's only so much that you can do with... And this I'm going to be over, over the place a little bit here. So just bear with me at this point. But when they keep talking about building through the draft, you have six picks in this upcoming draft. Three in the first round three in the second round in the 2025 NHL draft. You can't solely build through the draft. I feel like that's just simply impossible because that's just going to push this thing back so much further because you're drafting 17-year-olds and 18-year-olds that are going to be nowhere near ready to where you want to be in the next few years. You have to make some trades. And I'm not saying build through the don't build through the draft. You can utilize your draft picks 100%. But if you're drafting constantly in the range of not top five, not top six, not top seven, you're in that seven to 12 range, you're in that eight to 13 range or something like that where this team has been for the past couple of seasons, it's going to be harder and harder to find that top tier talent that you're looking for that can most likely be gutted or gotten in the first five picks. And still, that those guys will be even a couple of years away from reaching their true potential, reaching their true ceiling on where you want the team to be. Imagine doing that for a player that you're picking in the mid-first round, in the late first round, in the second round even. That's going to take a little bit. And if your plan is solely doing that, why are you signing guys to long-term deals? Why are you signing Travis? And this is not hitting Travis Connecty, nowhere near close. But if that is your game plan of solely building through the draft, why are you signing so many guys to long-term contracts? Why is Travis Konechny signed to a long-term contract? Yeah, Travis Sanheim, that wasn't your doing. That was a Chuck Fletcher doing. And right now, yeah, Travis Sanheim is kind of making the, the contract look a little bit bearable, but we'll see how that goes on. Why are you extending Nick Sealer? Why are you extending some of these other guys that really don't deserve extensions? Now, you're taking a risk with Owen Tippett. Yeah, he had a breakout season last year. Right now, it's not looking good because he can't generate anything. He just cannot generate anything. And he needs to really start picking it up for that contract to make sense. He signed him in eight years. He gave him an above $6 million cap hit. He's going to have to start doing something eventually. But if you're thinking of just solely building through the draft and you have so many guys here with long-term deals, when those guys are genuinely ready three to four years away, Travis Konechny is going to be in his 30s. He's going to be like 31, 32 years old. Sandheim's going to be in his 30s. Tippett's going to be around his late 20s or something like that. It's just, I don't think the plan meshes with the ideas and what they're physically doing with some of the players on this roster. Because you solely just can't build for the draft. You need to make savvy trades. You need to make hockey trades you got to get some guys off of this roster that just do not belong here. I'm talking about a Joel Farabee. I'm talking about a Morgan Frost. You had so many chances the past so many years to trade away Scott Lawton for first-round picks. It was rumored out there. It was talked about. I The last thing I saw, you know, first-round picks, multiple first-round picks for Scott Lawton. I, I don't know why you didn't take those offers because you liked Scott Lawton so much. Now I understand he's a, probably a great locker room guy. That's what everything has been said about Scott Lawton. He's a fantastic locker room guy, fantastic guy to be around, fantastic in the community, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. If you have a chance to get extreme value for, for a guy, well, if you get more than what the guy is worth in a trade, you have to take that opportunity. You just cannot hold on to the guy because you value him so much. And this is also the thing going back with trades, specifically with this front office, that sometimes I think they're holding off trades too much because they're trying to get so much value in return. When clearly some guys just aren't worth that much. Some guys don't have that much value in this league. Now, granted, yeah, Joel Farabee, I'm sure teams will take flyers on him, but... His contract, how many years, what, what did he sign, a five-year contract, six-year contract or something like that a couple of years ago? 
yes, he's 24 years old, but I believe he's making around somewhere near 5 mil, 5.6 mil, somewhere in between that range of a cap hit. Some teams are not going to be willing to eat that entire salary. That's just the case the way the league goes, especially with, with a cap league. Some teams are just not going to be willing to eat all that. And the same thing goes with the Rasmus Ristolainen and trade rumors. Even when Anthony Sanfilippo brought it up, he says that, you know, maybe this thing goes into the offseason because teams are more willing to take on a full salary for two years instead of three years left on the contract because Ristolainen has three years left on the contract. It'll be two of this offseason. So teams would be more willing to take two years instead of three. But I just don't know what they're going to do right now. And I just have a little bit of skepticism and a little bit of doubt in the back of my mind that they're just a little too complacent with the roster at hand. Because it just feels like they're afraid to make some trades, that they're overvaluing some guys on this roster. Because if you're in a rebuild, you need to look at all faces. You need to look at all players that are down in your prospect system, that are down in the minor leagues with Lehigh Valley. you got to look at some of those people. There's some guys here that probably deserve more better chances, younger guys that are down there that probably deserve more chances than the amount of times that we've seen a Scott Lawn, that the amount of times that we see a Garnett Halfaway, the amount of times that we see Nick Delorier. There's more people that probably deserve more, younger guys even, just to take a risk to see what they're made of. We're not even getting those opportunities because we're seeing the same guys out there every single day that really don't deserve chances. Like, how many more games is Morgan Frost going to be healthy scratched for before you even move him? Does Morgan Frost even have value in this league? I have no idea. He probably doesn't. Not enough value. Because <laughs> you're probably not going to get much for him. Like, you've got to take advantage of some players that are out there, some, you know, rosters that have a lot of players that maybe there's a young guy out there that's talented that maybe just doesn't fit on the roster because there's just so many, you know, people taking his spot. You know, you probably could have done that this offseason with maybe a couple of teams. You know, with Marco Rossi with the Minnesota Wild, that's probably never going to happen at this point. Uh, Cole Perfetti with the Winnipeg Jets, that could have been, a you know, a case. But then now Winnipeg's one of the best teams in the league. Minnesota's one of the best teams in the league. You're not going to get those guys now. You're not going to. You probably could have done it in the offseason. You probably could have made a trade for a Martin Nietzsche from the Carolina Hurricanes. Look how great he has been this year. You know, you could have done that, even though you could still go to the point where, no other team traded for Martin Nietzsche's, so there's that. But you got to be able to take flyers on guys. You you got to. You got to make trades in a rebuild as well. You can't just solely build it through the draft. Look at what Columbus is going on here with David Juracek. He's a very talented young defenseman, and they're completely underutilizing him. Yes, he does have flaws to his game. I think his biggest flaw is he's not a good skater, but he's got a fantastic offensive mind. He's got a lot of creativity. He has a future upside as a really good offensive defenseman in this league, and Columbus just is undervaluing him and underutilizing him. Why don't you take a risk with that? Why not? Because right now, Danny Briere really has not made trades that I would say are savvy, in my personal opinion. Yeah, there's some interesting trades out there, obviously. When you traded Ivan Provorov away, you did that three-team deal. Yeah, you got a first-round pick for Sean Walker, but it probably would have been easy with the way the season he was playing with. And you really only traded Cutter Gauthier was because he asked for a trade. Now, I'm sure there were a bunch of teams that were willing to trade for a Cutter Gauthier, but you liked Jamie Drysdale a lot, and that's what you went after for Jamie Drysdale. Now, we still don't know what Jamie Drysdale is going to be as he's progressing, but right now it's just like he can't stay on the ice. That's really, you know, he has a lot of talent, can't stay on the ice right now. So we're going to have to see how that pans out. <sighs> he just, they need to be willing to take risks. And I think right now they're too complacent and they're not, they're too afraid to take risks because they're too happy with the guys that they have in the locker room. Like they're so in tied to this, we got to be a flyer, you know, what it means to be a flyer, blah, 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 that you know, cliche thing that this franchise has been spewing for the past so many years. You just can't solely build a roster because you believe these guys are flyers, like they're traditional flyers. That's a very flawed mindset. Can't keep going back to this broad street bully mentality. That's not the league anymore. It's not. 
And now I don't think Danny Breer thinks that's what the league is. I'm not saying that whatsoever. But you, you need to take risks on some talent. You just gotta. Look at, you know, there's so many rumors circling around Trevor Zegras with the Anaheim Ducks. He clearly is not happy there. Whether that has to do with the coach being an asshole because there's a lot of rumors circling around that. Or th there could be a, a legitimate possibility of trading Trevor Zegras. Why don't you take a flyer with that? I don't know what his value is right now with the Anaheim Ducks because, yeah, his point totals, he's been injured the past couple of seasons. Yeah, his point totals haven't been there the past few years. He's still very young, still immensely talented. You should take a flyer on that. There could be a chance there to be a number one center, a number two center at least. Why don't you take that risk? Now, I don't know what you would give up for that. I don't know if that requires draft picks. I don't know if it requires some roster players. Probably does. Probably does. Maybe it's more of a change of scenery type of thing. Maybe you involve maybe like a Joel Faraby in that trade or something else to get Trevor Zegras. I, I don't know. I don't know. But you got to figure out a way to do something here. <laughs> because ugh, the lack of talent on this roster is just very eye-popping. Just like I said, there's only so much hard work can do. You've got to find a way to get some talent on this roster. And that's not solely just building through the draft. Because it's physically impossible just to build a team through the draft. That's why so many rebuilds take forever. Look at some of these teams that are taking forever to get out of their goddamn rebuilds. Look how long it took New Jersey to get out of their rebuild. Look how long it's even taken Buffalo. Buffalo hasn't made the playoffs in, what, over 10 years at this point? How long have they been in a rebuild? For too long. Uh, how long is San Jose's rebuild going to be? I have no idea. They've been bad for a little bit. Um, some other teams, Chicago, they're going to be bad for a while. And I mean bad for a while, even with Connor Bedard. They're going to be bad for so long. Until they finally figure it out. you got to find a way to take some risk with trades. You really do. You just need to. Because there are guys on this roster... That just simply don't belong here. You really have to. And that is the bottom line, in my personal opinion. I know I barely went over the game today, but I think my thoughts there, like I said, the lack of talent really showed tonight. Ivan Fedotov deserved a lot better in this game. He was the only reason they were really even involved. The game was not good. Their clearing attempts were terrible. Hell, one of the goals was a terrible clearing attempt by Eric Johnson trying to use the boards. And it just automatically eventually goes in your net. Yeah, was it a soft goal allowed by Fedotov? Yes. But I more blame it on the turnover because you had so much pr troubles getting the puck out of your own zone. It was terrible. Their passing was terrible. So many guys felt like they had hands of stone. Not accepting passes. Can't pass to the open man. Fumbling the puck, losing the puck, and when you get it, when you have a chance to shoot the puck, you don't because you're looking for too much, looking for the perfect pass, too much looking for the perfect play. When I look at Carolina, besides of how talented they are, what they do good, they get guys to the net, they cycle it around in the offensive zone, they get guys in front of the goaltender, they shoot it from the point, and shooting from the point is really effective, especially when you have guys in front of the net. Because you never know when the puck is going to deflect off somebody, when you have enough guys in front of the goaltender to screen him if that puck does eventually go through. you got to find a way to get bodies to the net. This Flyers team doesn't do that. They really haven't had a net front presence, you know, really since JVR, but even though it didn't feel like JVR was that good at it, I'd really say since Wayne Simmons. You haven't really had a real net front presence since Wayne Simmons. It's been that long. They, they just need to do things here, and my skepticism is starting to leak in a little bit with just the way the front office operates. Because like I said, I think they're just in love with a little bit too many people here. They got to figure out a way to do some things here. They got to move some people. They got to get some guys off this roster that aren't going to be a part of the future. You just got to. So that's where my mind is. And this these past two games against Colorado, against Carolina, the talent discrepancies, it, it really shows. It really shows. Like I said, there's only so much hard work can do. It really is. Matt Vey Minchkov can only do so much. Konechny can only do so much. And Sandheim can only do so much. <laughs> Hell, I even think I would be even saying that at this point. Sandheim is turning heads. He definitely is. He's been playing fantastic. It's only those three guys, though. 
need more. Need way more. And I don't know how you do that, but there's a lot of guys on this roster that just don't belong. So that's where my mind goes right now. So appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section down below. Don't forget to drop a like. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Does me a great deal of service. And uh, also use the code TTP Sports twenty dollars off your first purchase at SeatGeek. Great deal. Don't pass it up. Appreciate you guys for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.